Hey everybody, Dearly here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Charming Empire along Koichiro Sero's route. We're on chapter 4, and he's shown a bit of jealousy over us. So again, things slowly progressing. Very, very slowly. Not nearly quick enough for my liking. But let's see where this chapter takes us. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. The only sound in the dining hall is the clink of the silverware on our plates, but I'm used to these quiet dinners now. Soshi has told me time after time that speaking at the dinner table is not very ladylike. Then we should have some music. But if we don't talk, why are we even having dinner together? I feel dumb chewing quietly on my food. I might be used to these quiet dinners, but I like Japanese food more than the Western meals we always have. I miss Grandma's food. Oops. I look over at Soshi to see if he caught my mistake. He doesn't say anything, but he furrows his brow at me. Sorry. I pick up my spoon again and notice my hand is shaking. I thought I was used to this, but I guess I still get nervous when I eat with Soshi. I move my pretty silver spoon carefully as I scoop up some of the seafood soup and guide it to my mouth. Can't I ask that Grandma and Grandpa be bought here? Maybe Grandma could at least be bought here as a cook. Give me some concessions. After he finishes his plate, Soshi usually leaves right away, but today he stays seated. I wonder if he has something to talk to me about. A servant comes to take away my plate as soon as I finish. At palace meals, the servants take away each plate when we finish, so that makes cleaning up faster. Are you accustomed to palace life yet? Huh? So she has never asked me that before. But I shouldn't say that out loud, so I sit up straight and give a simple answer. Yes, everyone at the palace is nice. I see. That's good to hear. So she drops his gaze to the table. For some reason, he doesn't seem as imposing as usual. What's wrong? Maybe I said the wrong thing. Soshi taps his fingers on the table. Um, is there something wrong, Soshi? He glances at Kagimitsu standing behind him. Kagimitsu steps forward, as if he knows what Soshi wants. Kagimitsu is Soshi's advisor, who's always by his side. He's also my childhood friend. But given our positions and how busy he is, we barely had the chance to talk. Today, he looks as cheerful as always. Allow me to explain on Lord Soshi's behalf. Kagemitsu speaks more formally than usual. It's probably because Soshi's here. I hope I'm using the right voice. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think this is the voice I gave him. Currently, your movements are limited to the palace, but as Highness believes, you must be getting bored. Ah, oh, that happened a while ago. Since there's a festival today, he wishes to give you special permission to go into the town for the night. Really? Oh, <laughs> Really? I'm so surprised Soshi is willing to give me permission to leave the palace that I stand up from my chair. My cup shakes from the impact. Hey, what are you doing? S sorry It's not ladylike to get excited. I quickly take my hands off the table. Soshi just sighs. Do I really have your permission? Yes, but it is not simply for fun. It is important for you to observe what the town is like. In other words, it's for research. Still, I'm excited to be able to go into town. See new things. I get to be a tourist in my own country. However, you never know what will happen out there, so I can't have you go on your own. Of course not. I need my bodyguard. So I have to take a whole entourage? That won't be fun. I will allow you to go into town as long as you take Sarah with you. What? When I look at Soshi in surprise, he replies with a scowl. What? Is there a problem? No, not at all. I can just go with Sarah? Well, it's a lot less obvious. I don't see why not. But I can assign you more guards if you'd like. No, Sarah's more than enough. Please, let me go into town. This time, I try not to lean on the table, but I can't hold back the excitement in my voice. Soshi probably thinks I'm not acting very ladylike again. It looks like Soshi really trusts Sarah. He must be really strong. Again, we have seen such. I get ready for my first downing into town. It's like a date! Since we only passed through the town when I came to the palace, it's my first time walking along the streets like this. Wow, it's so lively! The streets are decorated with flowers and flags for the festival. The red and white flowers look Japanese from far away, but there are lots of flowers I don't recognize, so they must be Western. The women's outfits catch my eye. Some are in beautifully patterned kimonos, others are in Western dresses with hats on their heads and parasols in their hands. The men's outfits are interesting too, but I can't help focusing on the women's lively costumes. 
So, this is what the town is like. I clutch my hands together in awe. What is this supposed to mean? Sarah raises an eyebrow at me. I've lived in the capital for a while now, but I've never been able to see what the town's like until now. Darn it, I skipped another line, I'm so sorry. The palace is an interesting place, but I wanted to walk through town since the first day I got here. My excitement contrasts sharply with Sarah's darker than usual mood. Is it that fun to be in town? Yeah, you don't like it? It's changed a lot in the past few years, but I don't think it needed to. Towns are good enough with the basic necessities. It looks like Sarah doesn't like that this country is westernized so much. A servant told me that western uniforms are better for battle than Japanese ones. Eh, I guess it's a matter of opinion. But no matter how much the guards tried to convince Sarah, he wasn't willing to change. But my opinions don't matter. Where do you want to go? Sarah suddenly turns to me, and it suddenly feels like we just came here for fun. I... Huh, it kind of looks like it doesn't really matter which one you pick. So I'll just pick and want to see all of the shops. All of them, every single one. First, I want to see all the shops. Sarah scowls at my carefree manner. All of the shops? How many shops do you think there are? <laughs> exactly. Huh? They're not just on the street? Of course not. It's impossible to see all the shops on the street alone in one day. Then let's come back. Every day. I guess you're right. The street goes on as far as the eye can see. In the countryside, there were only a few shops on each street, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. I wasn't paying attention. I got too excited. I'm supposed to be here for research. Well, I can research every shop. I glance at Sarah to see what he's thinking, but I can't read his face. Why are you staring at me? Because you're the prettiest thing here. I just thought you would get mad at me for acting too excited. Why would I get mad at you now? You're always like this. <laughs> he is used to me by this point. Oh, right. Sorry, I'll focus on my research now. I don't mind. I came here as your bodyguard. What you do is up to you. I guess. Sarah's right. I'm glad he didn't get mad, but it's kind of sad that he's ignoring me. He's not ignoring you, he's protecting you. He's better at answering me now than when we first met, but... Sarah is always with me and I spend the most time with him. I want to get along better, but it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, I beg to differ. We've gotten closer. Spending so much time with him has let me see a lot of his good sides. I wonder what Sarah thinks of me. I don't have the courage to ask, but I want to learn more about him. Can you take me where you usually go? Where I usually go? Why do you want me to do that? I don't know much about the shops in town, so I want you to introduce me to your favorites. We don't have the same tastes. Don't blame me if you get bored. Sarah doesn't change his tone of voice, but I can tell he's not very into this. At this rate, we're going to be distant forever. I've been in the palace this whole time, so it all feels new to me. Can you please take me somewhere? If that's the case, we could go anywhere. Sarah's annoyed tone almost makes me give up, but I try to come back stronger. But I'm with you today. Fine, they can go wherever you want. Are you okay with not seeing the festival? That's fine. I just want to see the town. It's not a complete lie, but I'm actually more interested in getting to know Sarah more than going to any shop. Sarah finally gives in to my request. I follow him as he leads the way. We walk along a street I don't know. Wow. We pass by a young girl's favorites, including dry goods stores, candy shops, and a motion picture theater. I lag behind to look at them as we weave through the big crowds of people in the street. Hey, where are you going? I want to see the shop over there. I answer to Sarah's loud voice as I run toward the shop. No, don't get away from him. You know better. What pretty Japanese candies. A set of dried candies representing the four seasons flowers are lined up in the window. They're so cute I'd hate to eat them. Hey, are you alone? Huh? I turn around to find two smiling men closing in on me. I cautiously take a step back. But they keep getting closer. Afraid I'll bump into the crowd if I back up anymore, I step into a nearby alley. No, you should have just backed up into the crowd. It would have been better than an alley. And how could I have possibly gotten this far from Sarah? We can keep you company. It's lonely going to a festival all by yourself. I'm with someone. My voice gets so quiet that I don't know if they can hear it, and they don't show any signs of leaving me alone. Hey, 
That's a nice kimono you've got on. Are you a little rich girl? N no I shouldn't tell them the truth. I don't care if you're rich or not. Let's get going. One of the men grabs my hand. What's going on? Suddenly, the two men turn around at the sound of a familiar voice. That's none of your... Sarah! I think it is my business. Sarah takes my hand from one of the men. Ch Why are you with this girl? The other man clicks his tongue and scowls at Sarah. It looks like they know each other. That's none of your business. Leave now. The men whisper angrily, but don't say anything directly to Sarah's face. One of them kicks the wall before they both leave. Um, did you know those guys? Know them? I don't remember. I thought they might be some of the guys who know how strong you are. They might be one of the rebels, or have heard about me from the rebels. I don't know them personally. I see. It might be my imagination, but Sarah sounds distant. I hope he's not mad. Of course he's mad. You ran away from him. Hey, you wouldn't go see the town, right? Let's go. He briskly walks away. He's careful not to lose me, but it's hard to keep up with his pace. Hold his hand! He must be angry. Um, I'm sorry. Sarah walks so fast that I forgot to apologize. When I call to him, he finally turns around. He doesn't look too happy. Why are you apologizing? Since I got too excited and ran off, I made you get involved with those guys. You must be mad. I'm not mad at you. Really? You seem mad at something. Sarah doesn't take the hint, so I continue. You're walking faster than before, so I thought you must hate me and want to get this over with. When I finish, Sarah looks at me in surprise. He blinks a few times before he talks. Oh, right. It makes sense you would think that. It makes sense I would think like that? Am I wrong? Sarah's face clouds over as he gazes at me. When I meet his gaze, he finally looks away and guiltily scratches his head. I'm not mad at you. I just feel incompetent for not protecting you from those rude guys. Incompetent? Yes, you made him feel incompetent. I didn't expect him to say this. Seeing that his words aren't sinking in, Sarah explains. In other words, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at myself. I'm the one who should apologize, and you shouldn't feel bad about it. I see. Aren't you going to get mad at me? I understand if you do. I wasn't a good bodyguard just now. I'm not mad. As I said, it's my fault for getting excited and running off. I blush at how childish I acted before. Sarah gives me a pensive look. You're the reason I can do this job. I am? Well, he wouldn't have a princess to protect if you weren't there. <laughs> you heard the guards talk. I'm not good at getting along with people. If you weren't the one I was guarding, I couldn't do my job. You think so? You're really serious about your job, so I think you could be a good bodyguard without me. But I didn't protect you back there. It seems Sarah's tougher on himself than I thought. He can't forgive himself over the smallest of things. But you saved me by scaring those guys away. I forgot to say this, but thank you. I want you to keep being my bodyguard. Sarah turns his back to me when I smile. And that's enough. I'll get too easy on myself if I keep talking to you. Oh, I got him blushing. Now is he mad at me? Just to let you know, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> you read my mind. It's not that hard. Not that... Wait, really? Sarah glances at me and sighs. Jeez, don't be so uptight around me. That's not why I asked, but I'm happy to learn something new about Sarah. Then you shouldn't be uptight around me either. How does that work? I'm your bodyguard. We're not equals. I'm still happy despite Sarah's yelling, and we continue down the crowded streets. Ah, oh, and that's the end, but we had, yeah, that was some good building bonding experiences. And I wonder how much more time we get in this carnival, or a uh, festival, whatever it is. Hope we get to enjoy it a little bit more in the next chapter. I hope to see you there, or in some of my other videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.